Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Selescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for someone on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at AMT's 1974 Plymouth GTX. Now this model kit is out of my own personal collection. However, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. And now we wind the clock all the way back to 1974 as we take a look at the AMT 74 Plymouth GTX model kit. Now this model kit came out under RC2 and it is rife with very many mistakes but that could also be because this model kit did come out originally in 1973 and was upgraded into various years. Now one thing of note is on the box there are these decals on here and it does say GTX 446 pack and unfortunately the 446 pack was eliminated out of the engine option back in 1971. On the side of the box we have these excellent photographs of the built-up model. As you can see there it is right there looking like sort of a Starsky and Hutch type of deal with that packaging on it. There's our 446 pack engine underneath and there's a nice rear view of the car as well as a shot with the interior. And now we'll take the lid off our 74 Plymouth GTX and see what's in the box. Inside the model kit you of course get a sheet of instructions, a decal sheet which we'll take a look at at the end of this video, the body, interior bucket and chassis, and a bunch of other gray plastic components. I have looked at this before. You do get a chrome steering wheel in there which is kind of nice. There are some clear glass components and then of course more of our grape components. Tires and taillights as well as metal axles. More seats and all kinds of great stuff. And then we get this nice chrome. Our instruction sheet is the fold out variety and includes a painting guide as well as instructions as to what the symbols mean. This kit was originally released in 1973 and was modified in 1974 and included a police version back in the day. Our first assembly step is the wheels and tires and as you can see you get these nice stock wheels as well as these racing style wheels and then we have our tire and our wheel back and on the front it is held together with this little plastic pin. One thing to note is on the box art the model builder has installed these Krager mag wheels on the car which look really nice however the Kragers are not included in this kit instead you get rally wheels and flat style 1980s centerline racing wheels. Our wheel assembly continues in the back and this time the wheel back will have the metal axle hole for it and then you get a choice of either style of tire using of course your stock wheels or those center lines. Option A includes the stock air cleaner, four barrel carburetor and intake manifold while engine option B is the 446 pack from 1971 which includes the elongated air cleaner, the tri-carbs and the intake manifold. Step three and four is the engine assembly. Here we have a left and right engine block with the transmission molded in place, cylinder heads, valve covers, oil pan, front engine cover and then into step four we have the exhaust manifolds left and right as well as our alternator, power steering pump, uh, belts and fan and then your option of the 1971 446 pack or the 1974 air cleaner four barrel carburetor. Step five shows our interior tub going together. Here we have the two bucket seats going in place as well as our steering wheel the chrome shifter and our dashboard. Image 5B shows our custom interior going together with alternate bucket seats going into the tub with our shift lever as well as our chrome plated steering wheel this time around and our dashboard. And to continue our custom interior step 6 shows our two piece roll bar being glued into place. Step 7 shows our completed engine being dropped into the chassis and for our ride height you can either go stock or custom which is lowered. Then we have our radiator and rad support gluing onto the front 
as well as our battery and our windshield wiper bottle and this piece down here and then we've got our upper radiator hose going in as well. Step 8 shows the final assembly on our chassis with our differential and springs being dropped into place. The metal axle slips through these locators and then our wheels go onto the back. Step 9 shows our body and interior assembly starting with our clear windows which glue up into the body shell followed by our interior bucket and then our firewall and to finish it all off this nice little antenna goes toward the back end of the fenders. Step 10 shows the assembly of our front grille, which this is sort of nice because you can paint in behind here with your flat black. The grille is one piece included with the headlights. Then there are these chrome bars which glue in, and then after this is pushed in, our front bumper locates into place. Out toward the back, we have that big classic heavy looking Plymouth rear bumper which goes into place. There's a little pan which hooks up underneath and then we have our two red taillights going in place. This is very much like the police car rear bumpers throughout the 70s. Here we have the assembly steps for both stock and custom. One of them being a street machine that came out in the 80s and believe it or not it was painted red. I'll show you the box top for that. So as you can see, we have our body being glued onto the chassis. The hood drops into place. We do have this nice splash apron which goes up underneath the front bumper. There are the two side mirrors going in place. This is the stock style spoiler, optional spoiler I guess. And then here we have a spoiler from a Plymouth Superbird which you could use instead of this spoiler and uh, give it that street machine look. Step 13 is our final assembly step which shows our decal location and these are not the actual Plymouth GTX decals which you saw on the box top. These are from a 1980s street machine and well they look very 80s for sure and there's our front license plate going in place as well as the Plymouth GTX on the side. Our body shell is nicely molded actually. It includes the door handles, side marker lights, and underneath, no mold marks to really see. Again, very nicely done, actually, considering a lot of errors in this model kit. There is the little latch on the back of our trunk lid, and up front looks pretty nice. The holes, of course, to locate our front end, but again, very nicely done. Now for a bucket, our interior actually is really crisply molded, as you can see by the cushions on the seat here. This is pretty much A quality as far as interior tubs go. You do get the two speakers on the back. Again on the sides, door handles are very, very uh, shallow looking. But the center console is very nice. There are some mold marks in the carpet, which is a bit of a shame. And this does include an automatic style interior pedal system. Underneath our chassis is very MPC-like, which of course this would be much like the Dukes of Hazard model kits with again that same similar style to them. However, there is some very nice detail on here and I especially like the little crosshatch pattern on the catalytic converter. That's pretty cool. I'm um, not quite sure if that's exact. There is a mark on here saying 74 Plymouth GTX. And then underneath, not really much mold marks to be concerned with. Again, this is a pretty crisp looking mold from RC2, which was notorious for having flash issues. Now these six parts trees make up all the components that will build your car outside of the body interior and chassis and chrome bits. Now, James, my good friend, actually gave me a good explanation as to why they put these steering wheels in the plastic bags. And he was saying that because they tend to stick up and have this very tall pointy bit back here, which of course is your steering column. And with that sticking up, it's very easy to pile these parts on each other and have the steering wheel break off. So instead of doing that, round RC2, pardon me, would clip these off the parts tree and stick them in a plastic bag so that they wouldn't end up being broken or marred in the kit. Now here's our groovy hood and of course the Superbird spoiler. And as you can see, there's some nice detail in here, the little grate in the back. And then underneath, it is very smooth underneath. I was expecting some kind of uh, trunk mat, but there isn't any. However, we do have some nice mold marks, which you can always get rid of with some sandpaper. Our Superbird supports have some very bad sink marks in here. 
So again, you'll have to cross sand the top one out and then fill in the bottom one. But overall, you know, it's not very bad. Still pretty nicely detailed. Now looking up the parts that make up the engine, I'm beginning to put a couple of pieces together in my head from my memory collection. And I do remember a 1971 Plymouth Superbird by MPC that had the Superbird tail and the 446 pack in it. And I do believe this model kit is a continuation of that kit, shares the lineage, but they did not include that nose cone spoiler in here. They got rid of it for some reason. However, here is our engine components, and there is something interesting to note. Remember I said it was an automatic in there? Well, this is a manual transmission, as you can see by the box on the side. Second to that, there are no frost plugs in this engine. It is very slick and it doesn't really share the proper look of a 440 type of engine. Again, you can see the stock air cleaner and the side mirrors are actually not chrome. I thought they would have been, but they're, um, of course, gray plastic on there. So again, the molding is soft on this engine. You could always sub it out for something more detailed if you really choose. Here we have some interior components as well as the wheel backs and the inserts for our grill. As you can see with our wheels, we get the rear ones and the front ones, which have this sunken in part for our plastic axles to go into. The stock bucket seats are very nice. The pleats are very deep in them. And then we have the racing bucket seats with our seat belts for our four point harness. And then one big fat glaring error is we do have a dashboard, but it's for a 1975 Plymouth GTX second generation. It's nicely detailed though for the wrong car, but I do believe that round two has corrected this issue and put back the original 1974 instrument panel. There's our bucket seats, and again you can see that nice deep pleating on there. Looks very good. I'm amazed that AMT can make these seats and make them so deep, or MPC, I guess, and not have any mold marks or any major flaws on them. They look terrific. And then looking at our bucket seats again, very nicely done. Very cool. A little bit of mold mark underneath, but you won't see that when you build the model. So again, nicely done, but where to get a proper dashboard? Our next set of parts trees includes a firewall, rear springs and differential, the two-piece roll bar, the rad support and radiator, Then, if I move this over a little bit, you'll see our front splash pan and the stock trunk spoiler. Next up, we have our chrome components. And again, this one flashes right back to that 1983 edition, where you can see your centerline wheels, which are very popular in that era, as well as our stock wheels, which was popular when the car came out. And these are known as rally wheels. Again, nice chrome on here, though. You do get the moon style pedal on here, the foot pedal, and a nice fan with the clutch parts to it. Now my bumper popped off, the front bumper. So I'll just move that out of the way. Again, you can see some nice detailing on here. The words Plymouth appear in the bumper, which again is very nice. The front grille looks pretty decent. Again, the center line wheels have nice detail onto them. It's too bad we didn't get the Kragers though. But again, I mean, you can live with this. Uh, it will be quite nice as a car for display on your shelf. Here we have our clear glass components. And one thing that I find interesting is in the runner here between the front windshield and the back, you can actually read that it says Roadrunner 1974. So this model kit has had many different guises over the past, and now apparently it's a Plymouth GTX. One nice thing is the rear taillights, which have some very nice detail, as well as these high little ridges in here, which you could pick out with some silver paint. Our tires consist of the Goodyear Polyglass GT radials, as well as these massive Goodyear Blue Streak drag racing tires. And as you can see, they do have this really interesting tread pattern on them, whereas most drag racing tires are usually slicks. But I guess these ones are rainwater type drag tires. And then the Polyglass GT tires are not too bad. The only uh, reservation I have against them is just how tall these letters are and how high they stick up out of the tire. But maybe that's the way they go. There's the tread pattern. And again, you can always use your wheel spinner just to clean this up and make the tires look nice and road-worn. 
Now it's sad to note that you do not actually get these nice white decals that are on the box art. Instead you get decals which kind of look like this. So these green and blue stripes are what you actually get as well as this big black patch for on top of the hood and some New Hampshire NCN 909 license plates. These reflect the 1983 street machine car which was painted red so again I'll show you what that looks like. And that completes our look at our AMT 1974 Plymouth GTX. Now despite its flaws, this model can still build up to look very nice on your shelf. It will always be a custom though because of the errors with the dashboard and the 446 pack and all that sort of stuff. And the new model from RC2, the actual MPC 74 Plymouth GTX, has had all those problems corrected. But if you've built this model kit in the past, we still want to see what it looks like over on our Facebook page. Please share it with us and I'll leave the link in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video of AMT's 1974 Plymouth GTX. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!